Section 7.2, the sampling distribution of p hat. So last section we looked at the mean and standard deviation. Now we're curious what shape does it make? Because um, shape is important. If we can find out that it makes that normal curve, then we can use normal CDF to find probabilities. Um, so the sampling distribution of proportions is the probability distribution. We did probability distributions back in chapter five. Um, and so we make a histogram and then what shape do we get? Probability distribution of all possible values of the sample proportion. And a reminder, the sample proportion is a random variable. P hat is a random variable because every sample will vary a little. So we'll collect lots of samples and make a graph. So if we take a random sample of size n from a population where the proportion of successes is p, if both np and nq are greater than or equal to 10, 10 feels a little arbitrary, but that is the cutoff, then the random variable p hat will be normally distributed with the mean and standard deviation from last section. So I'm going to highlight normally distributed, which means we can use the normal curve. That's why we care about this. So let's go back to that community college example. So 10% of the all of the 3.1 million 18 to 24 year olds, so that was P is 0.10, enrolled in community college. So that was my success. And so we'll take random samples of size 500 this time. So n equals 500. What's the distribution of the proportions, p hat? Distribution is shape. So if we're going to check np and nq, and if they're big enough, then we can use the normal curve. So np will be 500 times 0.10, which gives me 50. And then NQ, you can do 1 minus P, or maybe you remember Q was 0.90 for 1 minus 0.10. And we get 450. And then since these are at least 10, it means my sample is big enough, the requirement is meant for normal. So that's good news. We like the normal curve. So we'll say p hat is normal. That's the distribution. And then I usually just like to find the mean and standard deviation because if we're using the normal curve, we're going to need those eventually. So mu is equal to p, which is 0.10. And sigma is just a formula, p, q over n, all in a square root. So it'll be 0.10 times 0.90 all over 500. And just make sure all three of those numbers are in the square root. And you should get 0 0.013416, because I want five digits. So now that we know it's normal, we can find probabilities. So part B, determine the probability that p hat is less than 0.15. So that's saying, what's the probability that our sample will have less than 15% young adults who attend community college? So p hat less than 0.15. Since it's a normal curve, I'm going to go ahead and draw that because it's normally distributed. If, this, if the requirement wasn't met, we wouldn't know what to do. So 0 0.10 is in the middle. So 0.15 is somewhere to the right. And we want to prove less, we want to find less than. So I'll shade to the left for less than. So we learned we can use normal CDF to solve this, but we need Z scores before we can use normal CDF. So I need to find a Z score for 0.15. 0.15 minus the average of 0.10 all over 0 0.013416, my standard deviation. And I get a z-score of 3.727. Um, this is different than last section because we have a different sample size. 
So that changed the standard deviation. So my z-score is 3.727, and we just do normal CDF, lower, comma, upper. So that's my dog shaking. Um, back on track. Okay, so my lower is going to be negative infinity, so negative 10 to the 99. And my upper is the z-score for 0.15, so 3.727. And we can use normal CDF. Negative 10 to the 99, 3.727. So normal CDF, lower, comma, upper in the calculator, enter, and we get almost 1.9999. So it's a pretty big probability. And that's it. So just a reminder of the normal curve, right? Step one is to find z-scores. And then step two is to find area with normal CDF.